I got a bunch of used locks from the Madhouse in Belgium. We cut them all in half to save on postage. And that's cool because it means we can cut this thing when we get through with it. This is a an older multi-lock. Very nice. These are a lot of fun to pick. This one's a, well, five pin, but it's pin and pin, so there's ten pins. We got an anti-drill pin there, so you can't drill out the shear line going that way. Very cool locks. I, I really like picking these things. There's what your key looks like. It's a little bit gummed up because I used about half of a can of Houdini blowing all the black junk out of the back of these. All of these are well used. They do work. You can't push it in too far. There's no stop on the back. So it does work if you get the depth just right. So beautiful lock. Hopefully we don't need that stinking key. I'm going to pick this one right side up. So maybe European guys who've been saying quit picking them upside down, maybe you'll quit complaining about that. We'll try it. See what happens. All right. I need a very thick pick. Or I'm sorry, a tension, tensioner. That's too thin. Something that I can control the direction of that core in both directions. Ideally, it'll jam in there. That's perfect. That way we can control it. In case there's a, a uh, like a dimple lock, or, I'm sorry, a dimple, a uh, spool pin in there, I can release tension without dropping everything. And that's perfect. These usually do have tension. I mean, have... Uh, uh, security pins in them. All right, I'm going to use a from the Sauber kit flat flag, and I'm going to go down the left side. I'm going to use the side of the keyway as my guide, and everything seems to be kind of houdinied up in there. All right, I'm going to zoom in a bit. Maybe we get some feedback. You guys can see it. All right, Let's see what we got. I'm going to apply moderate tension. Uh, I only want to pick the outer pins. That's ideally. When we pick the outer pins, we should get a deep fault set, provided they're they're all standard. Okay, that was pin five. Sorry, that was pin four. I'm on pin five now. Very last one. It's always the last one. Okay, I think we got him. Three. Got a good click and a very slight turn on that core. Not enough to tell me we're finished, though. Not enough to tell me we're hung up on those outer pins just yet. Pin two. Now we got a little turn, but again, I don't think it's enough. I just touched four, and I felt a very slight turn on that core. I'm again on five. And you know, that felt like an inner pin. I think I might have just screwed up. Come out of there. I'm hung up on, feels like pin one. Come out. I'm going to pick him pulling out, pick him from the back side, maybe. Come out of there. Okay, I felt a click. Pin three. I think we're on inner pins, guys. We didn't get a fault set like I thought we normally do with these guys. It feels like I've picked all of the inner pins flush with the top of the outer pins it means I got to reach down inside them. So that means one of those inner pins is cut deeper. So that means with a flat flag, because of the angle, I'm probably not going to be able to reach them. So I'm going to go, and I, I even hate to use this pick, a curved pick. These are notorious for getting hung up in the keyway, but sometimes you just got to do it to get those inner pins. 
So let's see what we got here. When you pick these, try not to get in a hurry. Try not to use too much force. The moment you do is the moment you lose the game. And what I do, I normally move up and down the line. And then if I've done it three or four times and I've gotten nothing, I lighten up on my tension and I allow something to drop. Okay, I just touched pin 5 inner pin and I felt a very slight turn on the core. That was 4. I got a very click, but I got no turn on the core. I'm starting to feel more and more I might have overset one of those inner pins. Oh, that was pin two. Got a nice little click when I lightened up on the tension. And I did feel a little turn of the core. Oh, very deep set. Okay, now for sure we're hung up on at least one inner pin. Nice deep false set. Kind of thought it was open there for a minute. And it is. That was pin three, inner pin. All right, fellas, there you go. Let's go ahead and cut this thing. I'll never figure out that zoom. I got two cameras and they both zoom opposite of one another. So that's why I keep screwing up. And, of course, I'm a little bit not so smart. That doesn't help things. See, we got. Um, I do have a key, so I can screw that up if I have to. Um, I'm going to use the tool. The tool. I think we can turn this a bit and just spread them. If I can get it lined up just right. All right, turn him. Okay, we are stuck on the top because the, the driver pins have fallen in the chamber. That is not a problem. I'm just going to take a standard pick, push them all back up in there, and then rotate a little bit past that point, he says. There we go. Okay. Take this guy. See which way the pins are going to come out. I think they're going to come out right along the top. That's good. And there we go. That's what it looks like, guys. Pin and pins. Um, I'm seeing a counter mill on chamber two, but let's take them all out and take a closer look. Take that back, there is no counter milling in two. That was must have been a bubble of Houdini. So all standard chambers, nothing unusual about that. All right, uh, let's turn these guys over the right way. So we had a spool in one, standard in two, standard in three, standard in four, and a standard in five. I think I got him turned around the wrong way. Here we go. Let's check the upper ones. See where the magic is. Uh, 
Okay, we have a spool, very nice spool in chamber one. A standard in chamber two with a spooled inner pin. And there's something else in there. That must have been this, another spooled inner pin from the previous one. I really don't know where he came from, to be honest with you. Nope, I was going to say he's the inner pin for chamber two, but that is a spool as well. Come on out of there. I'm going to leave those springs in for now. Number three. Spool outer and a spool inner as well. Come out. There you go. Tiny little guy, but he is a spool. Number four. Spool outer. And we'll figure out the outer inner in just a minute. And the last one. It is a standard outer and a standard inner. Nothing else in here. Standard springs. It would, it would be very unusual to find threaded chambers. Let's take a little bit closer look at these pins. Um, there is a pin missing from here. It must be that other spool. That's where he came from. So, let me pull him out. He is missing. I'm missing an inner pin. Unless that's him there, which would be not right. No. Nope. That's the inner for him. I am missing an inner pin. And I don't see him on... Oh, there he is right there. There he is. I was wondering where that little guy went. All right. Now we got them all accounted for. All right, on the bottom, we had a spool, and then all the rest of the outers were standards. Uh, inners, I'm not going to worry too much about those. I don't want to take too much of them, take them apart, but usually these are standards as well, and I think they all are. That's a standard. All those are standards. The inner pins on the top, we had four spools and one standard, and I don't even know if this is going to show up. Those spools are just absolutely like watchmaker spools. And then on the outers we had three spools, one, two, three, and then we had two standards. We had some steel pins in here in position number two, and I think this also is a steel one, and that of course is uh, counter drilling to prevent drilling. Anyway fellas, there you go, the multi-lock from the Madhouse in Belgium. Thanks guys, appreciate your time, stay safe, stay legal. <laughs>